Hello everyone, you're watching New Egg TV. My name is Steve, and today I'm going to unbox this GTX 960 Super SC or Super Super Clocked video card with ACX 2.0 Plus cooler from EVGA. So NVIDIA has finally launched the GM206. That's awesome. But let's talk about some of the changes NVIDIA has actually made to this GPU before I jump into it. The Maxwell streaming multiprocessor units on the GM206 have been redesigned to include improvements to its memory subsystem and cache size, as well as its usage, as compared to the GK106, aka GTX 660. These changes have helped make the GPU more efficient and ultimately lower Maxwell's already low power consumption. With NVIDIA's crystal ball, they were able to foresee the potential for low wattage GPUs in HTPCs and have added HDCP 2.2 over HDMI and decoding support for HEVC or high efficiency video coding, also known as the H265 codec. Now, aside from that, NVIDIA actually have a lot of other technologies that this GPU is compatible with. Specifically, VXGI, or Voxel Global Illumination, that was shown off at NVIDIA's Game 24 event. It's their global illumination algorithm that can be used to create photorealistic scenes. It also uses multi-frame sampled anti-aliasing, or MFAA, which, just like all anti-aliasing, will provide better approximation for edges in 3D games. Built for Maxwell architecture, it actually allows you to take less of a hit on performance while using it. Then there's, of course, DSR, or Dynamic Super Resolution. You guys have probably heard me talk about that before. Basically allows you to increase your rendered resolution by a factor of your monitor's native resolution. When your GPU renders at a higher res before displaying it, on your screen, it can improve the look of edges in games without the use of anti-aliasing, though you can still use that as well. NVIDIA also have many other features, including GameWorks, GameStream, G-Sync, and DirectX 12 compatibility, just to name a few. But as you would expect, EVGA has a new lineup utilizing the GTX 960. We have this model here in front of me, the Super SC with ACX 2.0 Plus cooler. In addition, EVGA also has the FTW, Super Clocked, and Standard 960s, all with ACX 2.0 Plus coolers. They also have a Super Clocked version of the GTX 960 model without that cooler. But let's take a closer look at what's inside of this box. All right, so several things inside the box. I'm gonna start with the accessories. We have some stickers, uh, an advertisement for the power supplies, a reminder that if you are running anything at lower temperature than 60 degrees C, the fans won't actually spin. More on that in just a moment, as well as a, an actual poster here. So moving right along, uh, we also have the driver's disk and utilities software here that EVGA is providing, although it's probably best practice to actually go to EVGA's website or NVIDIA's website directly and pick up the newest drivers and newest software. They're also providing a very small uh, badge, EVGA badge. It's a nice little metal one. And we have an adapter going from a VGA standard to a, a dual link DVI, or should I say it's not dual link, it's the analog DVI side. Uh, but that'll be able to plug in and give you that additional connection for older monitors. On top of that, we also have this manual and uh, everything you're going to need inside in order for to use the user's guide and get this installed. And they also provide for you a little bit of information, a small pamphlet that I'll probably have uh, maybe a close-up still on when I start talking about the ACX 2.0 uh, cooler and some of the information about their dual ball bearing setup. And finally, on to the GTX 960 itself. Now, of course, this is their super, super clocked edition, but you guys can tell it's, uh, it's pretty nice looking. Uh, we also have the ACX 2.0 Plus cooler here on the front, and on the back you can take a closer look uh, at the PCB itself, which is black with, with what seems like maybe a, a bit of a sealant there. It's got kind of a mirrored reflection. We have four uh, Phillips head screws that will allow us to remove the ACX 2.0 cooler if you want to do water cooling or maybe something more exotic if that's what you're into. Flip it around to the front again so I can talk a little bit more about the ACX 2.0 cooler, 2.0 Plus cooler I should say. Now, uh, the Super Super Clocked Edition has EVGA's beefier cooler, and there's a couple different upgrades that they've included. First and foremost, they have new, better, and improved fans. The blade design themselves have been improved, as well as using dual ball bearings and a three-phase six-slot motor, uh, all that's going to provide a bit better power efficiency, as well as better airflow. Now the fans themselves actually won't spin up until the GPU reaches 60 degrees C in DBI mode. 
I'll flip it around to the back so I can actually show you the small little uh, QSD switch that's down here. And basically, it starts in this position, which, uh, which provides that 60 degree C mode where the fan won't spit up. But you can also s switch it over to SSC Performance BIOS that essentially allows it to spin the fans in the lowest RPM possible. So dual BIOS setup here on this particular card and allowing you to switch between them. There's also three eight millimeter straight heat pipes that are here. And those heat pipes are actually providing better cooling efficiency of the GPU. We talked a little bit about that with Jacob at uh, CES 2014, 2015, I should say. But you can also, um, you can also see that these straight pipe heat pipes actually flow all the way through to the other side. And you might be able to see that if I tilt this a little bit here. Uh, meeting with the GPU here in the center, allowing more efficient cooling across the card and through the fin array. Also, there's a sort of a back plate looking plate here that's actually the MMCP, and it goes across the entire board. And that MMCP is the memory MOSFET cooling plate, basically helps to dissipate the heat from the memory as well as the MOSFETs. Now, this particular board also uses a six plus two power phase design for more stable overclocking. And if you can see here at the very top, they're, they're opted for a eight pin peg connector for power as opposed to the six pin, which is what the standard one would use. Um, on the back side here, you can see the PCI Express uh, Gen 3 slot connector here, or I should say the actual uh, interface here, as well as at the very top, we have the SLI finger, which you'll notice is missing its twin. And that is because uh, that this, this card was designed to operate in a maximum of two-way SLI, I believe. So flipping around back to the front again so you can get a closer look at the uh, whole card. And it looks nice, I'd say. I think they did a really good job. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the specs. So uh, the two GPCs on the GM206 are made up of eight Maxwell streaming multiprocessors with a grand total of 1,024 CUDA cores, 64 texture units, 32 ROP units, and the stock base clock is 1126 and boost at 1178. This card, however, uh, has a factory overclock kicking it up to 1279 megahertz or an additional 153 megahertz increase, as well as the boost being 1342, uh, an increase of 164 megahertz. Two gigabytes of GDDR5 memory here, and that memory clock is at 7010 megahertz standard but uh, 128 bit memory interface. So a slight change there, but it's offering a total memory bandwidth of 112.16 gigabytes per second. I should also mention if you intend on overclocking this card that the thermal threshold or thermal throttle point is actually 95C before the card will start throttling back. Now flip it around to the, uh, the IO section of the card itself, or basically the output. And you can see we have three different display port, full size display port uh, ports here, as well as an HDMI connector. And we have a dual link DVI connector here as well. Um, on top, you can tell that there's five different connectors, but you're only gonna be able to use four at a time. Okay, everybody, before we part ways, I just wanna mention that EVGA is also providing you this adapter that will take your two six pin peg power connectors to a single eight pin power connector to power this particular video card if your power supply doesn't already provide one for you. Now, aside from that, I just wanna thank you guys so much for watching this video on EVGA's GTX 960 Super Super Clocked Edition. And thank you so much, guys. We'll see you in the next one.